Hi, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to take a look at the YF-29 Durandal Valkyrie by Bandai. This is from the Macross Frontier series, second movie, The Wings of Goodbye. I'm not normally the biggest Macross fan when it comes to purchasing the toys and kits from Japan. I love the series, I love the original Macross, I love Macross Frontier, pretty much all the cartoons I've watched at some stage and enjoyed. But when it came to the VF-25 and the YF-29 from Macross Frontier, I had to get them. They're some of the most beautiful planes. This one in particular, the YF-29, is one of the most beautiful fighter plane ship toys that I've seen. So I did whatever I could to get a hold of it. Now, this particular toy was pretty difficult to get. And the first time around, I couldn't get it for a reasonable price. I watched it on eBay rising. I think at one time I saw it for six or seven hundred dollars and that's way more than I'm prepared to pay for something of this size. But luckily it was recently reissued and I managed to get it. So today I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, I don't have as much trivia as what some people who review it might be able to tell you but I just want to show how beautiful this thing is. So to start with, we've got the box, which you're looking at now. Uh, pretty attractive in itself. On the front, we've got just simply a picture of the fighter mode and the batroid mode. 30th anniversary sticker here. Having a look at the sides. Another view of the batroid mode in combat with his gun open. The back goes into more detail about all the features that this has. Features like the dagger being removable from the shield, close-ups of the face, the missile pods in the shoulders, pilot, the improved Gerwalk mode, all the stuff that we're going to have a look at once I get it open. On the other end of the box, a picture of the Gerwalk mode. Very unique to Macross. One of the things I love about Macross. That side and that side feature more plain detail. Just going to pause this and get it open. Okay, the lid's off. The first thing that you'll find in the box is a set of instructions. This is the first time I'm opening this, so I don't really know what's in this book. little bit of artwork, really just instructions, nothing much more than instructions, so I think we'll just put that aside. The next thing is a tray holding the new improved SMS stand. pretty standard. This is exactly the same as far as I can tell as the one that came with my VF25S. So I'm just going to put that aside for now as well. In here we have the Beast, the YF29. Now I've already cut this with a pair of scissors, but this whole box was sticky taped shut. I think that's that's very good. Um, for the price I paid, I think 260 I would expect it to be packed pretty well, and it was. It was securely in there. So once I open that, if you have a look in here, we've got the plane itself, the gun pod, removable fists, the dagger, all pinned in place by these styrofoam bars. So I'm going to pull out these bars out the bits and pieces and have a, a better look. The first thing I'll tell you, if you don't own one of these, they have a nice weight to them. It's not like holding a, a transformer or some other kid's toy. It's actually substantial. There's something to this. Straight off the bat, I noticed that this jet mode has 
spiky part pointing out on the top of where his head will be. And I almost broke it off then. I was just about to give it a yank, but it was snagged on the plastic bag. If I'd pulled that bag any harder, I would have snapped the top off that, and I would have been very upset. So if you don't think about it on yours, you might end up breaking it. Just a bit of warning. Oh my god, look at that. That is so beautiful. Very sleek. Very glossy. Now, I can feel a kind of slime on there, actually. Probably some mold release fluid or something else from the manufacturing process. So before I go any further, I think I'm just going to take this and give it a bit of a, a rub down with a cloth so I don't get this slime all over my fingers. The first thing I want to show is just a rundown of some of the danger points on this because after handling it for a few minutes now, I can feel that there are quite a few brittle, pointy bits on this that are probably going to break off really easily unless I make a conscious effort to not do it. So the first one is this canard at the front. Actually, I don't know if you call it a canard when it's backwards, but anyway, this little wing at the front has a tiny little point sticking forwards here. I just had this resting on my lap and that point went through the cloth of my jeans and I almost snapped it off when I picked it up but I just noticed it before pulling it too hard. So this little point, very dangerous. Also, the whole canard itself is quite brittle and it seems to be solidly attached to the nose here. So any kind of drop, I feel as if this wing is going to smash off straight away. So you can't drop this. It's not to be dropped. As I mentioned before, this point right in the middle, very brittle, very pointy, very thin. If you put this down upside down, like on a bench or something, you could snap that off in one go. Next, we've got a couple of other points here on the wingtips. Not as bad as at the front, but still little points that could easily snap off. We've got these little fins underneath the nose, the same as what the YF25 has, they're not very long, they're stubby little things so they won't catch very easily, but they are also brittle and stiff so they could probably snap off as well, along with the attachment to the landing gear. So this is definitely one to be careful with. Next I want to have a look at the different accessories that come in this pack. So, first off we've got this assortment of hands. I'm not actually going to open these hands because I know that a poseable set of hands come on the figure itself from my last one and they are adequate, adequate for my needs. So, unless I have a reason to, I'm not going to open this because if I open it then I've got to keep track of them and I'd rather not. So, we've got a pair of open hands, a pair of trigger hands and a pair of fists uh, punching hands. Here's the dagger that can insert into the shield. By the looks of it that dagger isn't easily going to fit into any of these hands so I think that the dagger knife, whatever you'd like to call it, is probably meant to go into the posable hands that are already on the figure itself. Next we have the rifle, or gun pod, or cannon. Uh, this is actually nicer than the one from my YF25. It feels more solid and it looks more like more like a, a gun to me than the other one. It's got the normal Macross trick of splitting open for whatever energy wave kind of weapon is. I don't know what the technical term for that is, but a lot of Macross guns seem to do this. This is how it's featured on the box heart. 
So when you pull that out, this little bit pops up by itself, the sight, and the sight has the ability to bend over that way. So if you want to, if the guy's holding it and he needs a line of sight, let me line that up, he could see it from that side or from on top. So whichever, whichever side he's looking at it from, you bend it that way and he could use that to target with. I don't much like it in the open position and I almost always keep my guns closed like that. I just feel that they look better. On the bottom, there's the two little tap peg holes in there, two little holes that fit underneath between the arms. And it's a bit hard to put it in unless you give it a good bend. So that's the way the gun pod is held in place. I don't think I've got it 100%. It's better to do it during transformation than it is to try and stick it in after the fact. These wings are capable of a vertical takeoff and landing kind of feature. So I'm guessing that's what it's for. For a vertical takeoff, it seems like they could rotate upwards like this and maybe it could supply some kind of thrust. Although that doesn't really look right to me. I doubt that any plane's going to be taking off just from having thrust applied here. Let's do an experiment and see if it can balance on those points. No, definitely not. If you tried to take off like that, you would end up nose first into the dirt. So maybe it's got something more to do with maneuvering in batroid mode, or at least some kind of maneuvering. Maybe not. Maybe not really vertical takeoff and landing. The wings themselves can extend out like this. This is one of the beautiful things about this jet. Its wings can become much bigger looking than what they were originally. I'm having a bit of trouble reaching far enough to show that on camera. Although I do think that I prefer them in, in jet mode. It just looks a bit more compact. And in space, where this plane is going to be most of the time, I don't imagine that there is much use for having extra lift that those long wings would provide. Uh, perhaps they're used for the armor pack, I don't know. I'm not planning on buying any additions to this, so it won't really be relevant to me. The nozzles at the back of these wing thrusters are also poseable. So we've got a reasonably large... For, for what it is, just a little nozzle on the end of the wing, got a good range of posability there. And he has the usual thrusters, main thrusters at the back here, which are formed by the feet. And they have some degree of posability as far as the natural bend in the toe is concerned, but not really in both directions. So I would have liked it if this upper section of the, the heel section could have nozzled downwards further it would have seemed more useful to me, more realistic but they've kind of limited the motion of the top so you only get the bottom moving down which doesn't look right I mean, you do, you do get a bit, I mean you can see there due to the ball joint in the foot you get a little bit of up and down and side to side The cockpit can open from the front end, not from the back. And inside we have our little Alto pilot figure. Looking good in his uniform. Now unlike the VF-25S, we don't get his kind of exosuit. I think this was made before that originally, so maybe that is the reason for that. You can see that as the cockpit opens, it also it just moves up a little bit. So you've got to be careful when bending it over that you don't just put 
too much torque in that direction. As you close it, you have to push it down at the same time as closing it, otherwise this will snap off because it's not the, the pivot point isn't here, the pivot point is somewhere inside and you have to rotate it around that point. On the back of the ship, if we remove the shield section, we have these gun pods that can raise up like this and then extend, forming this weapons platform. Although it is poseable, it's got a pivot up there, this is quite narrow. The part of the plastic part, the beam that holds it up is quite narrow and putting too much pressure on that, it just feels dangerous to me. I, I don't feel a great need to rotate that around 90 degrees. I'd be happy to just leave that alone because I don't feel like snapping the top off this toy. But facing forward, I, mean, I guess in space you don't have to worry about things like being aerodynamic or anything like that, so you can have the luxury of deploying these weird shaped weapons way out away from your ship without having uh, any negative consequences. I don't really like the way that it looks, but I can see how it would be useful. I mean, to widen the spread of your firing in combat would mean that you're going to hit more things. So it does make sense. You have the gun pod on the bottom, and then these would form the other two corners of a triangle of fire on the top. So it makes sense to have. I don't really find it very attractive. You wouldn't be able to deploy it in any kind of atmosphere anyway, so maybe not always that useful. So I'm going to put that away. Put my shield back on. Okay. Finally, for the time being, I think I will show you the landing gear. So I've already got it out here. Because I don't have fingernails, I didn't want to show you pulling it out because it took me a couple of minutes. But pretty standard landing gear. It's made of metal struts with these little wheels. They feel like plastic but look like rubber. It's hard to tell. I think they might be a very hard rubber. The back ones move back, but luckily the front one folds up forward. So when you're driving it around, the front isn't going to collapse in on itself. To put these away, all you got to do is pop them in and squeeze these doors shut, then push them down to lock with the back. Just fold it up and bend the flap over. So here's what it looks like from underneath. Very streamlined. I really love the way that all the parts just fit together in such an organic way. There are no huge empty spaces, no cavities left that make for obvious transformation lines like what you would see in an older kind of toy. This really looks like it is a fighter and the fact that it transforms, you don't even have to worry about that. If you like it as a fighter, then you can keep it as a fighter. It's not sacrificing anything for the sake of turning into a robot. It, it is beautiful in this mode. It's a standalone thing. I primarily bought it for how it looks in this mode. It's really gorgeous. Here we have the YF-29 in jet mode displayed on the stand, the SMS stand in jet mode. Thought I'd better show you this for completeness. As you can see, the gun pod underneath passes through the base of the stand. Just so you can display it flying with its gun pod. To get it off, all you have to do is lift it in the back section and slide forward like that.
to get it back in, just do the reverse, run the nose through that channel so the gun goes underneath, move the front peg in, let it sit on the back, there you go, all ready for display. Let's transform it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is pop these little tabs out and slightly bend up the wings like this just to get them out of the way. The next thing we're going to want to do is pull, it's alright, it's just a shield, pull the legs down, open these up a little bit so we can bend the legs, the lower part of the leg forward for the girl walk mode. Now grab the feet, pull them down to reveal the ankle articulation, then spread the feet apart to give him something to stand on. Next we're going to just bend the lower legs out like that into the shape of an A. Now, you can pose it in this way if you like. If you don't like the arms out, if you don't like to go work with the arms out, you can plug the shield back in at this point and pull the wings out and have a kind of intermediate way. Let me move the camera. So it is it is beautiful in that mode but I think most of us would prefer the arms out. So this is like a, a quick change if you're flying along you need a bit more maneuverability. He can pop his legs out like this and he's got that upwards thrust. But I think in combat he wouldn't choose to leave the arms in like that. So next, in order to get the arms out, the first thing we have to do is again pop up the wing section like this. Pretty much everything we do we're going to pop up this wing section. Grab this little panel at the side which is on a tiny little ball joint and carefully fold it down like that. So after it's folded down you can let go of the wing, turn it around to the other side, lift the other wing up and again carefully fold down this little section. Now it can pop off, both of these can pop right off, if you're too rough they'll just fly off, no big deal, more than likely you can pop it right back on, but I found that too much popping causes a little stress mark on the peg of the ball, so I'd rather not pop them off, so whenever I can avoid it I just do it carefully. Next thing, grab the whole plane, turn it upside down, and we want to grab a hold of these legs and this section here is going to bend forward. So to, we don't want to be too violent about it. So I'm going to put my thumb there and then just pull. Okay, that sound you heard was just the shield falling off. So we don't need that right now. So now that the legs are forward, that gives us the space we need in order to be able to swing these arms out of their cavity here. So before I do that though, I'm going to turn this back up this way. I'm just going to raise the gun pod because I found that the gun pod gets a bit in the way of what I have to do next. So I put the gun pod up, then I raise these wings again, turn it back over. I'm going to grab a hold of the arms, but don't grab a hold of the arms where the shoulder is. If you grab the shoulder, like this plastic part, it will pop off and you'll have a really difficult time getting it back on from this orientation. So you can grab the forearm and use that to turn this pivot here. So there's a pin right here. You want to swing it all the way 180 degrees. Making sure that's down. Do the same on the other side. Okay, now that that's done, we can lower this, this abdomen section back to where it was before and peg the top part of the legs back into their slots.
that's one. You can hear the click. And that's two. Hear the click. Okay. So I'm going to give him his A stance back. Set his feet on the ground. And now I'm free to position the arms however I'd like. So they're pretty stiff. Ah, there it is. There's that damn part. Always pop that off. Hang on. There's, you can see there's inside, there's a, like a little uh, bracket that just pops around a pin. Why is this not working? There we go. Okay. Let's try the other one. Maybe the other one will give me an easier time. That's better. Okay, that one, that one I figured it out. Now I'm going to put the wings back down. And as I said before, I don't much like that gun pod up, so I'm going to put the gun pod back down. Lock the nose in, make sure it doesn't fall off. There we have girlwalk mode. Let's give them a gun. Remember, these are the posable hands that you can open and shut however you like. So if I just grab one of them, bend the fingers open and the thumb down, I should be able to stick... There's a peg for the gun right into his hand. I should be able to stick the gun into that posable hand and have it peg on. Maybe if I move the thumb right out of the way, it'll be a bit easier. There. Ah. Damn it. These things are tricky. It's hard to do while you're trying to hover your body over the top of the camera. Okay. Let's, let's see if I can... Give you a better look. So you can see his legs are in a nice position. His shoulders are looking good there. One thing though is that these these little flaps that we move down to allow this mode to happen, to allow the legs to bend forward, I think in any practical situation it would be hopeless to design a ship with panels that are really in the way like this. I, he couldn't move these. These legs could never move. Basically, they would have to be only for hovering because there's there's no posability, like no no uh, maneuverability in the thigh. This panel would pop off. It'd be in the way of any kind of uh, action. So I think girlwalk mode is strictly for hovering. No no walking in girlwalk girl mode. But I can imagine with these thrusters at the side that can face downways, he would be able to get uh, more of that hover action than he otherwise could. Perhaps with these thrusters he would even be able to carry something under this back section. So some kind of container maybe. There's a lot of space under here and it would be he'd be able to carry something there. Let's see if I've got something that he could carry. Here we go. Picking up. Now he can carry the BFG of DIA Commander. When it comes to the gun, if you prefer, you don't have to put it in the hand. In Gerwalk mode, he has another bar underneath the plane that you can peg the gun in with. So if you look in here, you'll see this peg here. I actually forgot to show you in the transformation, but if you pull this peg, if you pull this peg down and just snap it in, it gives more rigidity to this back section. So it keeps the whole thing still. But aside from that, what it does let you do is grab the gun and slot it into that little gap that exists in that peg. It's, it's hard to show this on camera. The trick is that you have to come at it from the back. Not going, not pegging in, but sliding in from behind. So if I 
slide it in from behind like that, like going this way, it locks in very securely. So now, not only is he more rigid and more likely to hold a pose, but he can conveniently carry his gun pod underneath, leaving his hands free to do whatever it is he does, like saving pretty girls or holding his dagger, which is in the other bag. His shield can also peg onto this arm, right at the front there, giving him a bit more armour in case he runs into some combat. Now I'm going to transform to Batroid mode. Pop off the gun pod from underneath, grab that swing bar, lock it back up to where it's supposed to go, turn this over, I'm going to put these jet nozzles back to how they are meant to be. We're going to turn it upside down and open the front landing gear, then bend the nose of the plane back in on itself. Not too far, I want to make it kind of square like that. Alright, then we turn this up this way, making sure that the arms aren't obstructing these leg parts. Grab them both and unpop the abdomen section. So what I mean by that is this, this joint here has to come loose. The next thing we want to do is unpop the next section. So it's, the whole thing is starting to unfold. Everything that can unfold basically we're unfolding it. Then we're going to bend the back over slightly and then again it's going to split at the front up here and then the final split is this. This is going to slide down like this. It's on a, a swinging bar. We're going to carefully bend that all the way down. So now what we have is this long stretched out mess. It's a good place to start. From this point we need to get the head to come up. But before I go any further I'd just like to say before shooting what you're watching right now I did this in one easy motion and I got the head up exactly how it's supposed to come up. Unfortunately it's stuck that way and I spent the next hour carefully trying to wiggle a tiny little screwdriver in this crack at the back to push the stuck peg out of where it's supposed to be. So when I show you this you've got to understand that when I say you slide the head backwards to lock it into position, don't lock it into position. Don't lock it 100% as far as it will go because it will stick and you will be lucky to get away without smashing the, the underlying structure that holds the neck up. So here we go, this is what we do. Turn it upside down. Put your finger under where the head is. Start to pop the head up. So the head doesn't want to come straight up. So what you have to do is, while you're doing it, you, you need to slide it backwards. I don't know if you could see that, but if you look at this, I've just slid it a little bit backwards. At the same time as I was pushing it up, I was pulling it backwards. So I'm continuing to do that. It's a very complicated joint in the neck. It's on a slide and two pins and a ball. So there's no, no easy way to describe this. You'll see it when you get it. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the sliding part to see how far I've come. Maybe you'll be able to see it. This grey section here is sliding that way. Okay. Now, you won't be able to see this, but I can see that I'm not slid far enough up yet. So I'm going to uh, I've unpopped the head, pop that back in the ball joint. Now, I'm going to start applying some more upward force. Okay, so that's good enough. It's not it's not exactly even, but sometimes sometimes good enough is good enough. If I get that to the fully extended back and up position, 
it's going to stick that way and I will never get it back. The next time it will probably break off. So I'm satisfied with that. If you have a look. It can actually go up. It can actually raise up just a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is bend this nose back underneath like this. Be careful not to jam these panels into the sides. You don't want to snap them off. And be careful not to snap these canards off with our hands because they are very delicate. But with all the talk about sliding this head backwards and forwards and sticking before, you've got to realise that if it's not slid back far enough, you won't be able to get this nose up to where it's going. So it's a, it's a balancing act. So anyway, we hold the landing gear bay doors shut so they don't touch anything. Then carefully fit them into the space there. And this should go all the way back. You'll see the top curve reaches this grey bar here. If the grey bar that the head's connected to wasn't slid far enough back, you won't be able to transform it. With mine, if I go just that little bit further, it sticks. But that should be adequate. So you can see there's a bit of overlap here. The next thing we need to do is to remember to be careful not to snap off these canards while we're handling it because these are extremely brittle. We want to bend the whole groin section back up like this while at the same time moving the legs back down. So if you look here, here's a classic scenario of where you'll break the canard off. I've just gone to bend the leg down and the leg is overlapping with the canard. If I had pulled that one more bit, it would snap it right off. So carefully avoid that. Move the leg down. And you'll see, as I move the thighs, these little metal notches are exposed. So I want to get the notches out get the top of the thigh away from the canard and then peg the metal notches in. It's very tricky. The canard is really significantly in the way for such a brittle piece of plastic. But if you know that that's what you're trying to avoid, it is possible. And This problem is nowhere near the same on the YF25 because those canards just aren't there. So I've done it. I've snapped that in. So that is securely mounted there now. Although the posability is really limited. It's really badly limited by the canard. I don't think it would be clever to pose this even the majority of the time in robot mode. It seems to me it's just disaster waiting to happen. So that's basically the whole transformation except for bending over the last bit. So once you've bent over the last part at the back like that. It's really up to you what you do with the wings. So I think a good way to pose it would be to bend out the gun pod. Just move the wings right back like that. Shrink them down so they're less in the way. There we have it. Just let me change my camera. So it does make for a very impressive robot. It's very nice to look at, but definitely not one for playing with. And even, I would say, not one for posing just standing on the feet. Because if this, if this bad boy falls over, he's going to break to pieces. The crest is going to break off, the canards are going to break off little peg, little pins all over the place, these little pointy plastic bits, they're all going to break off. This is not one for posing standing on his feet. His gun, again, can fit into his all-purpose hand. The shield, back on his 
other arm, pegging in at the front. And there we go. The YF-29. Beautiful in every mode. Very nice to look at. Unique and still attractive face. There are some extra features on this that you don't get on the standard VF-25s, uh, extra weapons, so I'll show you that now. In his shoulders you have missile pods that can open up. In his legs, if you slightly open these panels and then pull them away from the body, they have the ability to rotate out like that and reveal their own missile pods. So he's got an abundance of these little uh, missile spam missiles in a battle situation. He's already got the equivalent of a, uh, a fast pack or whatever you want to call it, a, a weapons pack. I know that you can buy a weapons pack for this, but uh, it's really not necessary. I don't plan on getting any add-ons because this guy comes fully loaded. The gun pod, the weapon, the dagger, the shield, these spam missiles, very nice. For comparison here, you can see the YF-29 with my VF-25. And although they share a lot of things, there's a lot of things in common, like the basic design, the feet, the basic design of the head, although the heads are not identical, it's still the same kind of look. They are different in the, the amount of kibble that they've got. The VF-25 is a pretty stable figure, just of its own. It doesn't really need the stand. I've had this one standing by itself in a display case now for ages, and it, it hasn't um, fallen over. It hasn't needed it hasn't needed the SMS base to not wreck it, whereas this, this guy is not really stable. I think that his backpack is so heavy that he has a tendency to want to move backwards and when he does uh, depends how far it's going to fall but I think that it's it's probably going to be a disaster so he's going to go on the stand apart from that the the posability is basically the same but again because of the kibble the VF25 is better suited to action poses like being a sniper perhaps or um, with smaller figures, but the YF-29 YF is more suited to space, sort of hovering in the air using his gun poses, because you can't move the legs in the same way that you can move the legs in the VF-25, mainly because of these canards. One way you can get more posability out of the thigh joint, as you can see here, is if you take the stand connector for the robot from the SMS base and plug it in as if you were going to show it on the stand itself. So you can see that that connector lodges up between the cockpit section and the groin section and forms a more, like it, it forms a solid connection so it won't collapse in on itself by accident. Once that's in, that gives you the clearance between the canard and the thigh that you need in order to get more poses. So because he's going to be on the stand most of the time, he will have that posability while on the stand. And there's nothing stopping you from just using that part if you'd like to play with the toy without the stand itself. But as long as you can let yourself ignore the fact that that extra component is shoved in. So given that he's got that, let's see what kind of poses I can get in. Here's a good example of just how much posability he really has if you can balance him. His double jointed elbows, you can get really good fighting poses. He's got full posability in his shoulders, ball on his neck. So that's a pretty tight pose he's got there. If I pull back further, you'll be able to see that now that the extra piece has been put in behind his groin, he has extra posability in his uh, hip joints that he didn't have before. He can use those knees to their full advantage. They don't bend, um, they're not double jointed, but they do have about 90 degrees in the knees. So he's got 
some possibility for like punch up fighting poses if he wants to combat do physical hand to hand combat with the Vajra or whoever he's going to be fighting. But this pose is barely balancing. The backpack does impact a great deal on what you can do with his uh, poses when it comes to posing him without the stand. But on the stand, there's really not much limit to what you could do. So I'm going to pop him on the stand so we can see how that will work. So, as I showed you before, the stand mount really just pegs in, you split his cockpit away from his groin, shove that part in there, and then the stand will just slot straight into that. So, simple as that. Now, he's got no worries, no worry of falling over. Easy to show, easy to put on display, you could put that anywhere without having much concern, that becomes really stable. Look at this. There we go. Swivels in the thighs. Well, not really. The, it is in the thigh, but it becomes apparent at the knee, but the actual swivel is further up here behind the thigh. Balls on the hips. 90 degrees at the knees, balls on the ankles, double joint elbows, balls, shoulders, ball on the neck. In his robot mode, the gun pod at the back can be raised and point out over the top of his head and it does make a bit more sense in robot mode I think give him a bit more artillery pop open the missile spam bays ready for action main mode of this if you can get one of these for $260 like I did don't even think about it just grab it even if you don't like Macross you'll be able to flip this for at least $100 more than what you pay straight off the bat on eBay now, I'm pretty sure these are starting to go up again after the reissue. Now they're probably up to around $400. You can't go wrong. Um, the only way that I got this was by checking on my phone every half an hour for a couple of weeks when I thought a pre-order might be going up, and I was lucky enough to spot it instantly and just grab one. Uh, the secondary market, I probably wouldn't have gone out of my way to grab it at the high prices on the secondary market because Macross isn't my primary concern but now that I've got it I will never part with this I've got to tell you I'm in love with the plane mode robot mode is pretty cool too but I've got the VF25 for that and with my super pack for the VF25 coming in in about two weeks I think I think that he'll be the one that stays in robot mode where the YF29 will be staying in fighter mode and between that that's probably all the Macross toys I'm going to need for the next couple of years so I'm very pleased to have this and I'm glad I could share it with you. Thanks for watching.